and we're singing now. Oh, I want to see him and look upon his face, and you know I'm there to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift up my voice, and you know that cares on. I'll be home and ever to rejoice. Amen. Luke chapter 10, beginning at verse number 38. The Bible says, Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister have left me to serve alone? Therefore tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen the good part, which will not be taken away from her. I want to give for our message uh, for this afternoon, you need to get to the feet of Jesus. You need to get to the feet of Jesus. As Jesus was going around to these different villages, he came across these two ladies that we read about in our text here on this afternoon. And Martha is like many of us that I think today we are so busy trying to conquer the world that we don't take time out for important things like sitting at the feet of Jesus. Jesus told Martha, he said, Martha, 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 you, you are worried and you are troubled about so many things. But there ain't but one thing that is needed, and Mary has chosen the good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Sometimes, church, you know, we need to examine how busy our lives can really get sometimes. We need to examine how, how tied up we get in the things of life. And if we see that we are taking, we are not taking time to sit at the feet of Jesus and to learn more about God's word, then we need to cut some of our activities down. Maybe so, maybe so that we can allow God's word to transform our lives because no one can take the word of God away from you. Amen. And Jesus invites anybody who is weary, anybody that is burning to come and to learn from him. That's in the Bible, right? He said in Matthew chapter 11, beginning at verse number 28, come to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your soul, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So, so Jesus will not ask us to do anything that is impossible. He won't ask us. Jesus will never require you to do anything that is impossible, but rather he will teach us great wisdom that will give us direction and where we need to go in life. So one reason we should want to learn from him is so that we can become more like him. That's the first reason. For us to want to know more about him is so that we can be more like him, our father in heaven. John said in John chapter 13, beginning at verse 15, for I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Most assuredly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who sent greater than he who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Now, Jesus is our teacher. Jesus is the greatest teacher ever known to man. Jesus is our teacher, and we will never be greater than our teacher. I know some people feel like they've gotten so smart that they know a little bit more than Jesus, but we will never be more knowledgeable than Jesus. We will never be more knowledgeable than him. And one reason I can say it because he is the word. Y'all remember that? In the beginning was the word and the word was God. And the word was with God. And the word became flesh and came down and dwelt among us. And we beheld him as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So Jesus is the greatest teacher ever known to man. And even though Jesus is not physically here on the earth, so you can literally go and sit at the feet of Jesus and hear words coming out of his mouth 
out, God has made it possible for us spiritually to sit at the feet of Jesus and learn from his words and his examples through the scripture. That's what Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 15. He said, and that from a childhood you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be complete and thoroughly equipped for every good work. So we look at these first century Christians, the first century church. They had an opportunity to see what Jesus looked like. They not only had an opportunity to see what Jesus looked like, but they were able to touch him physically, put their hands on him, to speak to him, to have an actual conversation with Jesus. And we have a great advantage over them today because we have the fully revealed word of God. We got the fully revealed word of God and we can see all that God did to bring Christ into the world. And we can see that Je see what Jesus did throughout the ministry that he had while he was here on earth. And we can get to see all sides of Jesus. And Jesus, some days he was healing, some days he was turning over tables. But we get to see all the sides of Jesus and his ministry. Now there was some during the first century who would get to hear one of Jesus' parables for the first time. Can you imagine that? Sitting out there with Jesus, he started talking about the fig tree. Sitting out there talking with Jesus and he began talking about some other parable and, and what you thought is just some random old story that he's coming up with actually has a meaning that is deeper than one could ever think. Not knowing that those parables that he was teaching them in that very moment that over 2,000 years later that somebody will be talking about those very things that he said and just like it changed lives when he first spoke it, it's still changing lives today. And that's because the word of God, church, is is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. The word of God does not change. If it was good enough for Paul and Silas, it's good enough for me. If it was good for the old time, it is good enough for us today. Now, there are some, even today, examples for, uh, for reasons people say they don't believe in God. Some will say, well, how can you believe in somebody you've never seen with your own eyes? How, how can you believe in somebody that physically you have never seen? Even one of Jesus' own disciples who was with him through his ministry had this problem. Now you would think out of all people, if anybody was going to understand who Jesus was, what he was all about, it would have been those that had spent time around him. But notice in John chapter 20, beginning at verse number 24, the Bible says, Now Thomas called the twin, one of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said to him, we have seen the Lord. So he said to them, unless I see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger in the print of the nails and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. And after eight days, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, the doors being shut and stood in the midst and said, peace be unto you. And then he said to Thomas, reach your fingers here and look at my hands and reach your hands here and put it in my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. But blessed are those who have not seen yet believe. And truly Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ and that believing you may have life in his name. That's good right there. That by believing you may have life in his name. Now there are many in our world today, church, that are just like Thomas. A lot of folk in the world today walking around just like Thomas, they will not believe in anything that they cannot physically see, even though we have ample evidence that Jesus lived, and not only that he lived, but that he died, but on the third day he rose again with all power in his hand. And we cannot see the wind, but I bet you still inhale and exhale. 
I, I, you don't see the different ingredients that are inside that pill because you take it because you know that whatever's on the inside is going to help me with whatever's going on on the inside of me. And that, that's, not, that's not an excuse that we can use because I don't know about y'all, but we can see Jesus even in the simplest things of life. You go outside, even like today, this morning we were here and we were worshiping. Man, so it, it shook some folk the thunder was rumbling so loud. How at one minute it can be like that and before you know it, the sun came out. How, how the wind can be blowing and just thrashing and after a while it comes to a calm and there's peace. I don't know about y'all, but in my house, if I turn on the air conditioner, the only way it's going to go off is if I turn it off. So somebody had to have a hand in making the rain to come on and making the rain to go off and then causing the sun to go out. Nobody but the Lord. Nobody but the Lord. Now, if you want to increase your faith in God, take time to sit at the feet of Jesus and learn more about him. Now, as a child of God, you are in that that ought to bring you more joy than being able to open up your Bible and absorb as much of the word of God as you possibly can. Now, there are some things that I want us to consider about opening our Bible and learning from the master. And the first thing that I want us to consider is that as we sit at the feet of Jesus and learn from his word, is that we need to search the scriptures. The word search means to attempt to learn something by careful investigation. Or searching to try to learn, to search, to find out, or to seek information. And then we got to search the scriptures. Why? Because somebody can be telling you anything. Do you know that even I right now could be pulling your leg to the right, to the left, to the up and back? The only way you would know that it was is if you go back and you search the scriptures for yourself. If somebody call out a scripture, you need to write it down. You need to go back. You need to check it. You need to investigate it and make sure that that is actually what thus said the Lord. The Bible says that these were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they searched the scripture, not just on Sunday, but but they search the scriptures daily to see whether or not those things were so. If you want to find out, like I said this morning, it's simple. Open it up and we can find out what we need to do. Now, for example, the prophets of old continued to search the scriptures, hoping to be able to find out more about this Jesus that was to come. First Peter chapter one, verse 10 says of this salvation, the prophets have inquired and searched carefully who prophesied of the grace that would come to you, searching what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ who was in them was indicating when he testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glories that will follow. To them it was revealed that not to themselves, but to us that were ministering the things which now have been reported to you through those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things which angels desire to look into. Now, they, they diligently search the scriptures about things that were going on. But we get to know all about it because Jesus revealed it in the New Testament, but we still got to search the scriptures. You still got to search the scripture. I, it, it's good. It's good if you got somebody that's teaching you what the scriptures say. But you need to know what the scriptures say for yourself. Because when the devil come at you at 6 o'clock in the morning, your preacher ain't there. When the devil hit you on your job, ain't no elder in sight. When the devil is attacking you in your house, you ain't got no prayer warrior that you can get quick, fast, and in a hurry. You need to know what thus said the Lord for yourself. They diligently searched the scriptures. As I just gave the example about the Bereans in Acts chapter 17, beginning at verse number 10, said, Then the brethren immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea. And when they arrived, they went into the synagogue of the Jews. He said, These were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness. They were eager to hear what thus said the Lord. Apparently, they had some issues going on in their life. Apparently, they had some problems. Problems that they were they were eager to hear what thus said the Lord and they searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so therefore many of them believed and also not a few of the Greeks 
prominent women as well as men. Now you got to understand that this thing of Christianity and when Jesus first came on the scene, he was entering a world where pagan religion was the dominant thing of the day. This was something that was unheard of. These people had never heard or witnessed anything like this before. But the things that he was saying was so profound that these people, man, I ain't never heard anything like this before. And they had to go back and search it and they found out that everything that he said was true. Now, those Bereans, they didn't just take Paul's word for it. Well, Paul said it. Paul, an apostle, he was with Jesus. He said it. That's good enough. They didn't just take Paul's word for it, but they searched out the truth of the scriptures for themselves. And when they discovered that the scriptures agreed with what Paul was teaching, then they believed. Can I tell you, we ought not be so quick to believe everything that we hear. We ought not be so quick to hear everything that somebody, I know, it just sounds so good, don't it? It just sounds so soothing. Oh, it just makes me feel so good. But at the end of the day, is it what thus saith the Lord? Is it what thus saith the Lord? Now, we need to meditate upon the word of God. What is the importance of meditating upon the word of God? To help you remember what the word of God has said. What good does it do me to just visit the word of God one time out of the week and expect to be able to fight a devil that's coming seven days of the week? How, how do I expect that, you know, in, in my spare time, oh, I, I, I open up my Bible and I start reading, then somebody call, shut up that Bible, I get on the phone and, and, and talk, just forget about that Bible. I pick back up on Sunday morning or, or I'm getting ready to read my Bible and, you know, sports center come on and, oh, oh man, what's going on? Who won tonight? You know, whatever. And we are just so quick to allow outside distractions to intervene when it comes time for us to spend a long time with God. My favorite scripture in, in Psalms chapter 91 and verse number 1, it says, He that abideth in the secret place of the Almighty shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You got to stay in that place with God. You got to stay in the presence of God. You got to stay in the vicinity of God, the shelter of the word of God. Because we serve a full-time devil. We serve an everyday devil. He ain't just got a wow, but what he got? He got wows with an S. He got many things that he's throwing at us. He got many things that he's trying to operate on. So we need to stay with God. So that we'll be ready when those days of testing come. Because if you ain't being tested right now, can I tell you something? Some testing on the way. Did we talk about that this one? Some testing and on the way somewhere. And in order for me to be prepared, I need to know what I need to know so I can be ready. Joshua said it like this in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. He said, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. I need to read that again because somebody didn't hear what I did. The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it on Sunday morning and on Wednesday night. But you shall meditate in it both day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For And then after you do that, here's the benefit. You will make your way prosperous. Yes. And then you're going to have good success. So can you see that we get benefits by just getting into the word of God? By just studying the word of God? By just becoming acquainted with the word of God? Look at that. Them, them two right there are good enough for me. That my way will be made prosperous. That, that I'm going to experience trouble somewhere along this path. But because of what God has already promised me, this trouble is not going to get me off the path. But it's only going to make me stronger as I'm getting toward my eventual place that God has taken me to. We need to meditate on God's word. And this will help us to observe it. This will help us to keep the word of God. Which will cause us, as he said, to have good success. The psalmist said it like this in Psalm chapter 1 and verse number 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the what? Law of the Lord. And in it doth he meditate what? Day and night. Day and night. 
And meditating on the word of God will also give you a deeper understanding of it. Yes. I'm so, I've become surprised as of late that there are a lot of people that have a form of knowledge. Yeah. But they don't have no real knowledge, if you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. A lot of people, their understanding of scripture is just what it says. Oh, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. What's behind that? Because, you know, so many times just reading one thing, we can get the wrong understanding from it. So just say, I can go to a scripture where it says that, you know, uh, after the jail shook and the jailer understood that everyone was loose and he was taking his sword to take his life. And Peter said to them, do yourself no harm, sir, for we are all here. And he asked them what they needed, what he needed to do in order to become men like them. And they told him to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ with all of thy heart and thou shalt be saved. And I can read something like that and I can be running around here and say, you know what, man, you just believe in your heart and that's all you got to do to be saved if I just read that one part because it just sounds so good it just sounds so convincing but that ain't the whole that ain't the whole part of it because as I continue reading I also find that that same night that they taught him and all his household and baptized them straightway so we need to hear the whole conclusion of the matter the psalmist says in Psalm chapter 119 in verse number 99, he said, I have more understanding than all my teachers for your testimonies on my meditation. The third thing, the, the second thing that we need to consider sitting at Jesus' feet is to do our best to memorize the word of God. You've heard me often say it's a good thing to write some stuff down on sticky notes and then in common areas where, where you are all the time, just write some things down. Folk call them affirmations. You know, you write some things down and you place them in certain places that will help you to memorize what the word of God has said. The Bible teaches us that we should do our best to hide the word of God in our heart. That's what the psalmist said. He said, your word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against thee. So the benefit of keeping the word of God in your mind and trying to memorize the word of God is so that you will not sin. So if I can keep it on my mind, if I memorize what it said, and if I know assuredly that's something that God don't want me to do because I already got it in my mind, the next time I come again, oh, I ain't even going down that road. God, uh, uh, that's a no-no. I know the Lord would not have me to go that way. I know he would not have me to do that. And you will have that ability when you fit in the word of God in your heart. Because there are a lot of people, even though they may be doing something wrong, they may be so honest in it. They may, they may be so devoted in it because they honestly don't know any better. There are some people that are actually ignorant of the word of God, actually ignorant of the word of truth. You remember Saul before he came, Paul? He was dedicated. He was devoted. And he thought that what he was doing was for God. He thought that God was pleased in what he was doing, but he soon realized that that was not the fact. And just as devoted as he was when he was a persecutor, he was just as devoted when he became Became a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Colossians says it like this. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly with all wisdom. Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and in spiritual songs. Singing and making great and melody in your heart unto the Lord. Now recalling, memorizing the word of God can help you to remain faithful to God. I won't be so quick to fall into temptation when I already know what the temptation is about. When I already know what the temptation is. The psalmist says that the law of, of his God, the law of God is in his heart and none of his steps shall slide. That's good. When none of his steps shall slide. When you walk in, in the path that God has laid out. Now, now things are going to happen, but God said, you know what? If you keep my words in your mind, if you keep my words in your heart, I don't care how wet the ground gets. You ain't even going to slide to you ain't even gonna slide to the side because you know what the word said. Child of God, can I tell you, you can stand your ground when you know the word of God. 
You can hold your peace when you know the word of God. You can go to sleep at night when you know the word of God. You can stop pacing the floor when you know what the word of God has said. Luke says, blessed are those who hear the word and keep it. He didn't just say, blessed are those that hear it. Because, Elder, you know, I can hear something in this ear, and it can come out this one. It ain't made no pit stop up in here nowhere. It just went through, it just went through one ear and came on out the other. He said, blessed are those that are not just hearers of the word. And I fear that we have too many Christians today that are only hearers and not doers of the word of God. We hear it. Amen. Oh, that sounds good. Glory be to God. But then when it comes time for us to actually make application in our own life. Amen. Like, but if we do not submit to what we learn and make it a part of our life, make it applicable in our own life, then we are no better off than the demons. James chapter 2 and verse number 19 says, you believe that there is one God. You do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. But do you want to know, O oh foolish man, that faith without works is dead? James also said in James chapter 1, verse 21 and 22, Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving God. Deceiving y'all. You ain't fooling God. God knows who we are because we are whose we are. God knows who we are. He knows all about us. We can never pull the wool over God's eyes. And we need to understand that it is not enough to have knowledge of God or to simply believe in Jesus and call upon the Lord because we must have an obedient faith that is pleasing to God. That's what Luke says in Luke chapter 6. Beginning at verse number 46. He said, but why do you call me Lord, Lord? And you do not do the things that I say. Whoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them, I will show you whom he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when the flood rose, the stream beat vehemently against the house and could not shake it, for it was founded on the rock. But he who heard and did nothing is like a man who built his house on the earth without a foundation against which the stream beat vehemently and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great. Now we love God and we want to make it to heaven. I believe that's all of us. I put two hands up. I put two hands up. If we love God and we want to make it to heaven, then we don't just need to be hearers. We need to practice what we study and what we preach. Another thing is that we need to keep in mind as we learn from God's word and sitting at the feet of Jesus is that we don't just need to keep what we learn to ourselves. But we need to take what we learn and go out and share it with somebody else. We need to take it out and give it to somebody else that they too may come to the knowledge of the truth of God's word. Jesus certainly did not want us to keep what we have learned from ourselves. He told his disciples in Matthew chapter 10, verse number 27. He said, whatever I tell you in the dark, speak in the light. Yes. Jesus said, whatever I tell you in the dark, speak in the light, and what you hear in the ear, preach on the house. He didn't say go in the attic. No, no. Did he say go in your closet and whisper to yourself? Go in there, go in there, what can't nobody hear? Jesus said, go and shout it out on the rooftop. Let everybody know what it is that I have told. Y'all remember the Samaritan woman in John chapter 4? It's a good example of this. Because she learned that Jesus was the son of God. She was so excited that she left her water bucket and went and told everybody in the village what she had learned about Jesus. Y'all, this is the same excitement 
that we ought to have when it comes to sharing what we have learned about Jesus. Because if he's really been good to you, you'll want somebody else to experience that goodness as well. If he's ever made a way in your life, then you want some. I don't know about y'all, but I love my friends and my family enough that I want them to know about Jesus, even if they don't want to hear it. Hey, every opportunity that I get, I'm trying to tell you something about Jesus. And I feel that sometimes we are too afraid to tell people that we love about Jesus. Jesus because we don't want to offend anybody. We don't want to rub anybody off the wrong way. But hey, I better off tell you now than when you lay in uh, cross uh, in a, in a, in a, where you can't do anything for yourself. We ought to take every opportunity that we have to encourage our friends, to encourage our family in the Lord. If they don't know Jesus, we need to be telling them about Jesus so that they can have the hope of heaven too one of these days. When we do these things, church, we'll become better students of the word of God. The people of God have to get to a place where we are not dependent upon somebody else to give us a balanced diet on the word of God. But whether in your own time, you got your own steady habit. In your own time, you actually have time put aside. This is God's time. I, I, I ain't got time to answer no phone right now. I ain't got time to watch no TV. I ain't got time. To, this is just time between me and God. I need to hear what thus saith the Lord. You remember when y'all were in the military? And whenever y'all would get up, I, who, I, then you have to check with somebody before you do anything. Y'all you had, had a commanding officer that, that you would check in with and he would give you your instruction. Did you do anything outside of what your commanding officer told you to do? No, you did not. You did those things that you were instructed to do. It's the same way of God. When you get up in the morning, you need to check in with your commanding officer. Because when you, I don't know whether you recognize it or not, but when you became a Christian, you signed up to be not an Uncle Sam's arm, but you signed up to be in the army of the Lord. You signed up to be a soldier of Jesus Christ. You signed up to hold up the blood-stained banner of Jesus wherever you go in the street, on the rooftop, on the corner, in the store, wherever you are, you have signed up to let people know that you are representing the Lord Jesus. So we need to check in. To see what thus saith the Lord. When you're troubled, you need to check in to see what thus saith the Lord. When your faith is getting weary, you need to check in and see what thus saith the Lord. We need to take time to sit at his feet. Amen. Any of y'all that ever had the opportunity, um, you, if you were raised up with your, your, maybe your grandparents or older people that were in your family, sometimes you may have had the opportunity to just sit around with them and, and they would tell you some things that they had experienced. They would tell you some, some things that they had been through, some things, you know, so, some things that you may run into down the road, but it's some things that they have already been to. And, and, and some of y'all can say, even today, you're thankful for the wisdom that they gave you. You're thankful for those things that you heard because even today, they are being a blessing to your life. That's what wisdom will do for you. We can find wisdom in the word of God for all situations, for everything that we deal with. You want to be wise? Get in God's word. Get in God's word. You can, man, you, you, can get, you can get all of the human wisdom that you want to attain in this world without knowledge of God. It amounts to nothing. Without knowledge of God and without knowledge of his word, it amounts to nothing. We need to get to the feet of Jesus. And if you stay at his feet, can I tell you, you'll be better prepared. When you stay at the feet of Jesus, you'll be better prepared when you actually have taken time to study the word of God and you know the word of God. That's why Jesus was able to stand even amidst temptation after 40 days of fasting in the wilderness because he knew what thus saith the Lord. I may be weak at this moment. I may be bound to fall of temptation, but guess what? I will not because I know what thus saith the Lord. We won't be so quick to succumb to peer pressure. Not just young people, but succumb to peer pressure, you know? Middle-aged people, old folk, you know? Old people succumb to peer pressure, you know? You know, we, you know, everybody deals with that. You won't be so easily entangled in that stuff when you know what thus saith the Lord. And you can stand on his word because it's a sure foundation, church. 
It's a sure foundation. The waves of life will come and they will beat. The winds of life will blow. But when you are founded and you got a foundation upon the word of God, you can stand. You can stand as long as you are standing upon the word of God. And whenever you need to answer the life's problems, go to the word of God and find it in his word. And Lord, help me to remember what it is that I have studied. Help me to actually be able to not just read it, but out of all my getting, be able to get a what? An understanding of what it is that you said. So now that I've read it, now that I've got an understanding, what I'm going to do? I'm going to take it out to somebody else. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. I can't go out and teach until I've sat at his feet. I can't go out and minister until I first of all sat at his feet and learned and got a proper understanding because what I don't want to do is go out to try to defend and end up getting converted. <laughs> that, that's what I don't want to happen. So I want to make sure before I ever try to go out and share my conviction because truth be told, a lot of folk been convinced but they ain't been convicted. That's another sermon for another day. But a lot of folk <laughs> been convinced, but they haven't yet been convicted. So we need to wait until we know the word of God. We've hidden in our hearts and we have the proper understanding. So now I'm ready to go out and minister and to actually be that soul winner that Jesus has called me to be. Amen. We need to stay at the feet of Jesus. Stay in the word of God so we can be strengthened. And that's how you put on the whole law of God so that you will be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. My brother and my sister, God's word is true. And even after this world, as we know it, and heaven itself have passed away, God's word is still going to be standing. Amen. We have a duty and we have an obligation in the middle of a world that we live in where people are preaching everything except Jesus, where people are teaching folk everything except Christianity, you turn on the TV, it's garbage. You get on the radio, it's garbage. You get on social media, it's garbage. We need to make sure that we as the people of God, we never fail to tell somebody that there was a man that came, lived in this world. He died for your sins and mine, but he did not stay in the grave, but he got up with all power in his hand and he is now seated at the right hand side of God and he is making intercession on your behalf he did not just die for the black man he did not just die for the white man but he said whosoever will let them come so whether you're red you're yellow you're black you're white whether you're man whether you're woman whether you're young whether you're old today that you hear his voice do not harden your heart God is knocking God is knocking and he's waiting for somebody to say yes Lord what is it that I must do in order that I might inherit eternal life? My brother and my sister, you come to him by hearing his word. Romans chapter 10 and verse number 17 says, So then faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. After hearing his word, you must believe the same. He said, except that you believe that I am he, you shall die in your sins. After belief, you repent of your sins. Repentance is a change in our mind that produces the change in our action. And after repentance, you confess with your mouth the sweetest name known to mortal tongue. And that is that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. And be willing to be baptized for the remission of your sins. Have your sins washed away, done away with, never to come before you in this life, neither the life that is to come. And the Lord himself will add you to his body. If you're here this afternoon and you're standing in the need of prayer, you have that opportunity to request prayer as well. At this time, as we together stand and sing the song of invitation. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? And are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood? Cleansing blood of the Lamb. Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? 
are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Oh, are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Let the church say amen. Thank Brother Travante for a very timely message this evening. Appreciate him so much for that. And um, thank you for coming and indulging and Amen. getting your cup filled. Uh, get it filled and let it run over, and then you can drink from the sauce. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Isn't that good? That's good. Uh, I understand you had a great time today, and we appreciate that. And any time we come in the presence of the Lord, we ought to have a great time. Santa, uh, as the song say, we need to bring our burdens and leave them and, and go away with a rejoice and renewed spirit. I have a card here that uh, says, uh, pray for Traveling Grace for Angie and Mark Wims, uh, and then pray for Sister Tolan as she quarantines her and her co-worker who's both uh, battling, but anyway, we want COVID, battling COVID. Covert, so we want to pray for them. So this is submitted by Sister Brown. So let's do that just now. Can Father in heaven, we're so grateful for this time you extended to us this evening as we've come together in this place to worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you for your word that was provocated on this evening by Brother Travante. We pray that you continue to bless him, allow him to preach your word without addition or subtraction. And Father, we're thankful for all those who gathered. We come particularly this evening for prayers for Sister and Brother Williams. We pray that you bless them during their time of travel. And then we pray for Sister Levette Tolan and her co 